this, you get this library of books, and I mean, the, the, the Roman soldiers were getting it by the sword, but heck, they got it, right? So now we've, we've got these books, but they're in a bunch of different languages, two primary languages, right? Hebrew and, and, and Latin. Latin. Yeah, Latin. And thank goodness to those good souls, those, those Catholic priests that dedicated their lives to learning different languages and, and translating it. Mm -hmm. And we're all for it. Uh, we're all for the Bible. But there is one little catch with us. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly. We believe those... Well, I've, I've heard two things. I've heard translated or interpreted. I'm fine with both. Because like a translation and interpretation, I think are two. Because I had a conversation with a friend of mine who lives in Utah, who's LDN, and uh, for he was sending me stuff from like the Joseph Smith translation, right? Yeah. And I was just like, okay, so what do you think about this? I was like, okay, I under, I was like, I've read Matthew eighteen, you know, plenty of times. I'm like, yeah. okay, I was like, so is that him translating like a text from Greek or something, or is that? Like his interpretation, like his footnote, that's a translation of what? And he's like, and then he kind of challenged me. He was like, what, so what's the difference between a translation and an interpretation? I was like, if I translate something, you tell me something in Spanish, I'm like, translate it. Like, Dios te bendiga. Like, I know that in Spanish. Right. What did he just say? Translate. God bless you. But I said, hey, how do you interpret that? He's, uh, can you interpret it for me? He's basically wishing God would kind of put his blessings on but that's not exactly what I said. That's an interpretation. Exactly. That translation would be so that I've heard both. And, and so it's like okay. And know. I I knew where you're going with that. Yeah. And the reason I said I'm fine with both is because for this reason, you have a Catholic priest who has literally dedicated their lives uh, to learning multiple different languages, primarily Greek, primarily Latin. Yeah. That's challenging because especially when you look at Hebrew, they take all the vowels out. Well, there, there are no vowels in Hebrew. Exactly. They take all the vowels out. There's no, there's no vowels in Hebrew. Yeah, there's no vowels in Hebrew. So the other problem is Hebrew is way into what we would call a pun. Like one word mm -hmm. can mean multiple different things. In fact, it got to the point to where later on, after a while the Bible was written, the Hebrews today, they'll put little like dots and dashes underneath the letters to kind of lead the person reading to what to the version of that word that they want them to go to. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you didn't always have that. Yeah. And, and that's actually what's kind of cool and beautiful about the Hebrew language is that one letter or one word it can should. have multiple different meanings. So if you are a Catholic priest and you're not sitting next to the guy who wrote the dang thing, you have to interpret because you, you can translate it into four different words, but you can only put one word down on the page, right? Yeah, so yeah, I would agree, like, tr translation, of course, like you said, people are like, oh, there's thousands of translations of the Bible. But we, we feel like we get the cheap. We got a prophet, and in this case, you're talking about the Joseph Smith translation. Mm -hmm. We don't even worry about, about the semantics with that. He, yeah, so he, like, he, which, he found out from God what it should have said, and maybe that Catholic priest got it a little bit wrong. So, like, with that, and I, I shared this with you guys before. I would say, like, okay, um, in Peter, it says the church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. Okay. So the church is what has carried on what Jesus has taught the disciples, the turned to apostles, who then had disciples, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, they preserved what Jesus has taught. And like some people, like some will call it like apostolic succession. Like hey, we carried on. Yeah. Like we're we we go something can be we've translated. Priest authority and keys. That's yeah. So it's like hey, so those something may have been translated as you said. Like hey, I could have translated that and maybe I got a jot or a tittle moved it because you know that scribal error or whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's like hey, ultimately the church would be able to be like hey, based off of what we've been teaching. And such and such comes, brings a translation that says, okay, that's off, but that doesn't change our truth because we already have the truth. We, this is something that we've already been taught, like in uh, like uh, Catholic churches or like uh, Orthodox churches, they'll have their liturgy. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, even if we didn't have the Bible, 
based off our liturgy and the writings of our early church fathers, we can recreate the Bible just in that, and we can tell you what, we, what has been passed on through the succession. So even if, if uh, you know, Pope such and such comes, or you know, uh, priest such and such comes and says, hey, I translated this to a new dialect of German, and it's like, okay, it could be off. It'd be like, yeah, but it doesn't change what the church believes because the church has already had the truth because it's been given to the church to make disciples. Like, hey, go out there and, like what you were saying, hey, you're going to go out there and preach this stuff like that. And it's not because the priest is like the one, like, hey, this is what we're teaching. It's like, no, this is what has been passed on since the time of Christ. Have you heard the term syntax before? Vaguely, yeah. So the it, it's a it's a computer term. So the idea is a uh, hey, this is these are the ones and zeros that I sent out, and and it's did you get it? Yes. Well, what did you get? I got this. Oh no, something got dropped in in translation. Maybe there was a frame drop, or or maybe there was uh, power lines went across corrupted the data. Hold on, let me send that to you again. Did you get it? Yep. What'd you get? I got this. Cool. You got what I intended to send, right? Like that's that's syntax. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is when it comes to syntax in the Bible, there's like decades at best, centuries at worst in between what the original person wrote down and then what we have. So, so, so even if everything got well, there's perfect syntax between the past and the current, mm -hmm. even if what we have is incredibly accurate. You could pull in, it's kind of like a telephone game. We can pull in 20 different people, have them read the same passages of scripture, and then like FBI interrogate them and say, what does it mean? You're gonna get multiple different interpretations. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, That's I how think, you get so many different churches, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely agree with that, because when you were saying earlier, it's like it's all just something's interpreted correctly. Right. Like, no, I, I agree, because again, I've dealt with 